<laughs> we're, we're listening to your music right now. Yeah. Tell us. We have uh, Come Fly With Me on. Oh, cool. You'll be able to hear it right there if you want to hear it. If you haven't heard you yet, you sound great. I wrote this song. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, listen to this. It does sound good, huh? You recorded this with the old school microphones that Frank Sinatra sang in? The, yes. How did you manage to make that happen? You know, they, they, I don't know why they don't have all of this behind glass, but they use it. It's a working studio, one of the most legendary studios in the world. But they're like, yeah, I mean, when I went in to just have the meeting with Don Was and Al Schmidt, who the engineer has won, has 20-something Grammys. So you're like, why am I here? Like, what am I doing here? Um, they have, they're like, well, we, we set up Frank's mic and here's this, uh, the the stool that he sat on in case you want to just kind of get the vibe while we're picking the keys. I'm the like, stool he sat on? Yeah. Huh. I took I took tons of pictures with him. I'm like, there's there's where Frank's at, you know, because it's, it's just this crazy, and it creates a vibe that you just can't deny. The, the podium that the conductor stands behind, there's a ton of pictures of Frank sitting there studying lyrics, you know. So, again, it's this historic stuff that is just you, that they use. So it was uh, it's pretty great. Why would you record a Frank Sinatra album? Okay, so I have um, loved this era of music my whole life. My mom and I used to sit and watch m movies, old movies. You know, for, for me, I was a kid and didn't know how old they were. And so I've always loved the music. And a lot of people have made standards records. And so I always wanted to make one for like the last 20 years. I've wanted to do it because I love the music. And I got asked a few years ago, I think it was about three years ago, they did a, the Grammys did a 100th birthday celebration of Frank Sinatra. And I got asked to sing at it, and so did Garth. And I sang, I'll Be Seeing You. And when I walked off stage, I saw Don Was, who I know, he was the musical director, and he said, have you ever thought about doing a re an album of these songs? And I'm like, yeah, I think about it like every day. And um, that's when the idea of focusing it on Frank came up, because it's like, there's so many songs. I mean, I narrowed it down to 100 before I picked... 12 and but if frank recorded it, it became fair game and it gave me a way to kind of frame the record to have a focus the record's out today and it's called let's be frank yeah. do you feel pressure singing a bunch of songs that someone else made super famous i feel pressure singing a bunch of songs that like the one of the best singers on the planet in this genre made famous you know and i think the thing that made me take a breath was Nobody's ever gonna. I mean, nobody has ever recorded something that Frank made famous and has said, "Man, I really nailed that. I really showed Frank Sinatra how to do it." No one, no one has ever said that. The bar is Frank, and none of us are above the bar. But it's a way if you approach it like, "I want to pay tribute, but I want to do what do it my." Do, I was about to say, "Do it my way." I didn't really. Oh, mean, come, I didn't, on, <laughs> come on, come on, come on. You know, just to kind of. Um, so you have to approach it like that to try not to. Because, I mean, the thing about Frank that I learned in listening, the, the more that I listened, was that there's just, he's so conversational and really just makes you feel like you're sitting across from him at the bar and he's telling you a story. I mean, it's really, it's really that cool. And there are songs that, you know, Come Fly With Me it was written for Frank. You know, he asked for that song to be written for him. So... We have those kind of songs, and then there's songs like Summer of the Rainbow that you might go, well, that's more Judy Garland, but um, it's in that genre, it's in that era, and Frank recorded it. H Harold Arlen, who wrote Rainbow, also wrote One for My Baby, One for the Road. So, I mean, I don't know. The music is just, it's just timeless. Well, tell me about this one right here called I'll Be Seeing You. I'll be seeing you. This song is a... Uh, one of the one of the first songs I had a handful of songs that I'm like if I ever make this record this I'm gonna put this on there and that was one of them it's just a it's a sad song I love sad songs they make me happy me too but it also is kind of this wistful song about I'm every you know you'll see you everywhere and for me it's my mom I thought about my mom a lot when I recorded that song both my folks are gone um, and my mom would have loved this record so uh, I definitely felt her with me making this record and uh that song was really for her what about this one right here for the last time for the first time i'm in love for the last time so i have to say that there was no part of me this song was not written for this record so there's no part of me that went you know these frank songs are cool and these guys who have written all these really classic songs are okay but i wrote something that i think <laughs> is really you know it wasn't that at all it was that um, I, I don't consider myself a writer. 
Um, my husband hates it when I say that, but um, he's in all the Hall of Fames. You know, I just come up with ideas every now and then. And I came in one day and I said, I have this title and I don't have I don't have a song to go with it. And it's that was the title for the first time I'm in love for the last time. And he started singing this melody that is why he's in all the Hall of Fames. You know, it's like he it was from some other era. I'm like, where is this coming from? And it just kind of evolved. And we worked on this record and it was done, worked on the song. And we didn't have, we, I wasn't in the middle of making this record or anything. And it was like, I don't know where it belongs. It's not really a country song. It doesn't, it might, maybe it belongs in a Broadway show someday. And then when I started working on the Frank Project, Garth was the one who encouraged me to play it for Don Was. I probably would not have because I wouldn't have wanted him to think that I was trying to say, I think this is, you know, as good as Come Fly With Me. And... And uh, so I did, and, and Don l l really liked it, and he played it for the arranger before he told me. He didn't ask my permission. And the arranger, who's Vincent Mendoza, who's amazing, said, um, I'm writing a chart for it, we're doing it. And so I, wa I waited, and once we recorded it, as, as strange as it feels to have a song on this record that is an original, it felt like it, it, felt like it wasn't that weird to have it in, in with these other songs. You listen to this. Mm. Let me close my eyes. Don't think I'm weird for closing my eyes right now, Trisha. <laughs> Let me close my eyes. Do you like to do the thing where you play music in front of people and they have to close their eyes and like feel it, or would you rather them go listen and then come back to you and report back? Well, I like both. I mean, I'm an artist, so my ego likes it to. You know, it's kind of like it, it, it's like I like to play a song for somebody and, and see their reaction. It's like singing live for an audience. And, you know, it's kind of you, you know you like that you like that immediate response, that immediate feedback. But it's also a little embarrassing, you know, so it's kind of like, <laughs> like, here, I think this is good. Would you listen to it? And let me watch you listen to it, you know, so that it's a little embarrassing also. Trisha Yearwood's here. she got a record called Let's Be Frank. It's all except one Frank Sinatra songs and then one that you and Garth wrote, the one I just played there. Yes. That's accurate, right? That is accurate. Mm, very good. It's out today, by the way. Um, Amy, this is, I'm going to tell you a Trisha Yearwood story with her standing, sitting right, right next to me. Okay. Hi, Amy. Hi. <laughs> Trisha is so, like, normal. And cool. I, I was just sitting here as she's talking. That's how I'm thinking. I'm like, they just act like this, like this normal life. But well, like, not even that, like normal people stuff. Right. Too. Like, <laughs> Trisha and I are on the same board, like um, in, of an organization. Mm -hmm. And we were at a meeting last week, and Trisha's just at a table. Like, everybody's just at a table. And nobody bothers her. She doesn't, and this is like one of us. But really, everybody's like, this. She's really not one of us. Like all at the same time. You know what's so funny about that is I saw you and I'm like, there's Bobby Bones. I should go say, oh, hey, stop I did. It. I swear stop I did. It. <laughs> I swear I did. I saw you and then I was like, I'm not going to go bother Bobby Bones. Stop I swear it, I did. Trisha. I promise you that's what that happened. Stop it. You know, we when an artist gets asked to be on one of these boards, that meeting, um, they came up to me and said, um, Wow, it's so cool you're here. Most artists don't come to more than like, don't, don't come to the meetings. I, that was my second one. And they're like, I'm like, well, I'm, I mean, I'm a, you know, I'm like a I'm I'm like interested and I would like to be on a committee and I would like to help. Yeah, you were <laughs> dialed like, in. Yeah, I'm yeah. actually it was it was I, I thought it was cool. Thought that was real cool of you because. But so next board meeting I'm gonna say hello to you and don't don't we, be we weird can just about sit it. We can have other. a moment. Okay, yeah. we could totally do that. Yeah. I'll save you a seat. If you're yeah, please <laughs> save me a seat. Now, those meetings are tough for me because I'm at work <clears throat> really early, and then those things start at like 1 p.m. I'm like, because yeah. this is a bunch of data. That people like us don't deal that well in data, Trisha. No, I agree. I totally agree. How many spreadsheets can they put up there? Yes. How many slides? How many? Oh, my God. <laughs> Bobby, are what? you going to get on a committee? I'm on like three committees. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, I'm just making sure you're involved. I'm in, Yes. <laughs> if we're showing up at the meeting, we're involved. That's exactly It's right. hard to get to those meetings. We yeah. watched all the slides. We yeah. were there. We got the handouts. But that's my point. Like, she's there mm -hmm. with us roughneck. She's in there all oh, just taking it all in. <laughs> Uh, Trisha Yearwood's here. The record, Let's Be Frank, is out today. Let me read just true or false facts about you. You tell me if they're true. Okay. <laughs> because what happens is this stuff starts to get printed, and then people go, it's true, until you say otherwise. Right. Um, if a career in music didn't work out, you wanted to be an accountant. True false. or false? False? False. Go ahead. <laughs> um, my dad was a banker. I was an A student, and I everybody assumed because I got a business degree that that was my fallback, but I had no fallback. You had no fallback. I would not be an accountant. I can balance my checkbook, but that's kind of it. Uh, true or false, you helped start Matthew McConaughey's career. Oh, yeah. I'm absolutely responsible for his career. Are you being facetious? <laughs> a little bit. Um, he because? Was the, he was in the video for Walk Away Joe. Yeah. And he was a aspiring um, actor in Austin, and they 
they cast him, and um, if you go back and watch that video, he's he just looks like this little kid. But I always was joking, like, he isn't call, he isn't right, but we I know him a little bit. I mean, I've seen him at award shows and stuff, and he's very sweet. But I'm always like, I'm responsible. Like, it's my, it's it's me. Does he <clears throat> put two and two together? Like, does he still know Trisha Yearwood created him? He, I, I think he does. Yeah, good. He has to, I, right? I mean, I'm going to have to go back and watch that video now <clears throat> because I did not know that. Yeah. yeah. True or false, your mom baked you and Garth's wedding cake. True. Oh, yeah? Yep, true. My mom made um, cakes, wedding cakes and birthday cakes when we were little kids uh, to be able to stay home with us before we went to school. She was a school teacher, and when I went to the first grade, she went back to teaching, but she did the cake thing on the side for extra money. And so um, she had not made a cake in about 30 years, and when Garth and I married 13 years ago, I said, I would like you to make the cake, and I promise you. And she's like, no. I'm like, she's I haven't done it in 30 years. I'm like, it'll be small. It'll be a, it won't be a big deal. I just really would mean a lot to me if you did it. So she said, okay. And then, of course, I wanted like this. It ended up being like a five-tier you know, <laughs> wedding cake. But it was beautiful. So since you cook so wonderfully, did you get that from your mom? My mom and my dad were really good cooks. They weren't, you know, I'm not a chef. I'm a home cook like my mom and my dad. But they both really loved to cook they enjoyed feeding a crowd it like made them happy to make people happy that way and i think i got that from them for sure what was like, growing up like for you um kind of mayberry you know i mean i really didn't understand i thought everybody's life was perfect until i got a little older and realized that i was really lucky like my life was my mom and dad loved each other they stayed married they didn't fight we had um this small town if you ever seen the movie my cousin Vinny. Um, it's filmed in my hometown. It's a, it's a like, it's a little. That town, was your hometown. That's my hometown. So the town square, the courthouse, all that. About twenty five hundred people in the city proper, and I still know everybody there. And it's just, it's, it's, it's a great. It was a great place to grow up. Let me give you one more of these. True or false? You refused to kiss a male model for a photo shoot. True. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. It says years ago you had now a Revlon. No, I just kiss photo. anybody. But then yeah. I was just like, yeah. What's the story here? What's, what's the story? Yeah, of that? what happened? I had a. Um, I had a perfume deal with Revlon in 1992, and um, it was, you know, it was this, I had this music career where I'm, she's in love with a boy, and, you know, these little eight-year-old girls follow me, and I, um, and my manager was managing me and Travis Tripp, and Travis was the wild child. I was the, I was the, like, I'm not going to be a problem, and we both had a shoot that day, so he went to Travis's shoot, because if there's going to be trouble, it's going to be on the Travis shoot. I get to my my shoot in new york and the first thing that happened this was again early 90s was kind of like well um you're from nashville so you probably didn't bring any wardrobe that's cool so we're gonna you know give you clothes to wear and i'm like so we actually ended up wearing something that i brought him it was that kind of mentality it's changed a lot but that was the way it was then and then they uh, we were doing a commercial for um this perfume called wild heart and it was this kind of romantic sexy thing and i was not a prude at all but they really wanted me to kind of make out with this male model guy. And I'm like, I'm just not like, I'm, that's not what I'm not going to do that. And so I had to, and I had to kind of shut down production until my manager got there. And um, it was, so it was my turn to be the difficult artist that day. But I said, like my, the, the, the whole, the whole circle of the pie that is Trisha Yord's career, this is a little sliver in it. And the rest of my career is not this. And so I can't, I don't feel comfortable doing it. So, and the male model was like Matthew McConaughey. That's right. <laughs> if it would have been Matthew. No, but it was, he was kind of like, sorry. he was kind of like, look, it's a job. Like, I'm like, it's a job for you. Like you're getting, yeah. you're, you're hired for the day. This is, this is my career. So I just made a decision at that point. So yeah. Wow. Good for if, you too, yeah, though, you, right? If you see the commercial, you could probably find it on YouTube. It's, it's a, it's a sexy commercial, but I don't make out with a guy, but you know, I didn't need to. <laughs> What about that Love dog, it. Millie? I saw on your Instagram. Yeah, Millie. Yeah, is that the new dog? Yes, she is. How's she's that going? She's fabulous. Well, she's good. She's, um, you know, you get when you get a puppy, when you rescue a puppy, you just really don't know, especially when they're a mutt. You don't really know what they are going to be. Her paws are, I mean, like, I don't really know. She was like 11 pounds when I got her not that long ago. She's almost 30 pounds now. So oh, wow. So I'm not really sure what she's going to be. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but I have another dog who's a rescue who's about six years old, and um, we've had Millie for a couple months now, and... And Emmy, my older dog, is um, sort of past the hating stage. I mean, they're getting there. You know, it's kind of like I wanted her to have a friend because I'm a rescue person and I've always got rescue dogs. And we're down to one. So I'm like, look what I got for you. And she's like, I hate you. So, <laughs> you know, but she's good. She's good. What are you if people come to you, Trisha, and they say, what's your advice about being married and being happy? Because you guys look so happy all the time. There's two things. I mean, those are the, one thing is 
even though you are, it's the, the, they sound like they're going to be contradictory, but when you become a couple and we're both very independent people, you have to figure out how to be, how to, how to give, you know, how to, how to not be so independent all the time because it's not all about you. And we are in careers that are, that you have to sort of be all about you. I mean, when you're focused on an album coming out or what you're trying to do to kind of keep, make sure you get to keep doing what you do is very self, it's very self focused. But in a marriage, if you, you can't do that, you ha it has to be about the other person. So you have to figure out how to make that adjustment. And my theory is if you're not happy with yourself, you're not going to be happy in a marriage. So, and I've learned that lesson my, myself before. So I think that's the other thing. And we, we made our marriage a priority. So as much as we have these careers and as much as we are busy, we rarely spend a night apart. And when that was a conscious decision for us that we would not get married to be, to be together, to be apart. And that's worked out for you guys pretty well. Like, yeah. Is it hard, though, to maintain that sometimes? Well, I think sometimes, you know, sometimes it's like anything else. If you make what you make the priority is sometimes it has to be different things. Like when I'm working on the cooking show, I'm I'm gone every day at by 7 in the morning, and I'm not home till 7 or 8 at night, and I'm pretty much – going to bed soon because I got to get back up at the next, you know, the next morning. I, this is, I got in the music business because I didn't want to have a real job. I didn't want to have a job where I had to get up every day and go to work. So, but, but the show is kind of, and it's fun, but it's, it's a lot. And so when I come home, you know, there's no, there's no date time. There's no us time. There's like, and he's, he's, there's no food for him. I've been cooking all day on a TV show. So there's oh, no, you, you know, can't bring him a plate. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I'm like, sorry, uh, there's nothing, you know, and he'll have dinner. He'll make dinner, you know, he'll make something for me. So, um, he just knows during that time it's going to be this is you you're not my priority for these next three weeks and I'm sorry and and it it's it shifts you know that's just the way it is. Do y'all get to go out on dates like as just just you two like could he ask you out and y'all go out to eat and it's not a thing? We or? do we do we'll go to out we'll go out to eat or we'll go to a movie or something like that. We don't do that very often, um, probably because we travel for a living so we like to be home. Home buddies, you know? yeah. But um, but we do, and we and we think that that's important. You know, we, we I do think that, um, you know, it, you can't you can't just sit home in your pajamas all the time. <laughs> like it's like if you have a day off, you've got to get out and do stuff. And we talk about that. You know, Nashville's a Nashville's a great city, and it's it, every day it's changing. And so we were talking about this the other day, like getting out more and doing stuff. And I said, well, we need to, like, there's a there's a hundred restaurants I want to go try that we haven't tried. So you know, but you have to. You have to make an effort to do it. You can't just talk about it. You got to do it. Let's be frank. Is out today, Trisha Yearwood. It's a it's a lot of Frank Sinatra songs and a song that you and Garth wrote together. I I bet a question you get a lot is when are you putting out like a country album? Because it's been a while. It has been a while. Well, I'll tell you that the tour that I was on with Garth that lasted three and a half years that ended last year. So 2018 was the year of. Trisha getting caught up. So I've actually made two records in 2018. I'm almost finished with a country record. Really? Yeah. Wow. And I, it's been so much fun. I The hardest part was, I mean, this album, we, the, the Let's Be Frank album was all prep. The songs are pretty much set, you know, and then you go and we, we went to Capitol. So we're in L.A. So our time is money. People don't. I understand now why people don't necessarily hire a 55 piece orchestra anymore to do stuff because <laughs> um, most expensive record I've ever made, you know. But, and so you're like, OK, we're got to get this get in and get out. So we cut the whole record in four days and then we mixed it in four days. So we were eight days of work. The country record is different. You know, come uh, I still am old school. So I go around and I sit with publishers and I listen to songs and um, I had a lot of people here, it was interesting, say, well, how many songs are you looking for? I'm like, well, I'm making an album. Wow, that's so cool. You're going to do a whole album of songs? And I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, and, uh, and I was really pleasantly surprised at the songs I found. I'm so excited. So that'll be fall. Oh, yeah? Years. Yeah, so I'll be, I'll be back. Wow, look at this. <laughs> yeah, That's so, cool. Yeah, I'm Two really, records I'm, in the same year. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it. Ah, come on. Okay, <laughs> Trisha, you're what is here. How about this? Let me, let's go down memory lane for a second. She's in love, boy. Talk about this one for one second. She's in love, what, like you, you stare off into like a, a, a deep space whenever this song plays. Like what's going on in your mind, Trisha, when you hear this? I was just thinking about how big my hair was, actually. <laughs> She's going to marry that boy. No idea as a 26 year old girl, I just like the song. No idea that it would become this. It's still, you know, all these years later, it's um, a song that I, I don't know how many times I've sung it now. I never get tired of it. It's a great story. And 
um, I feel so lucky that it was my first single, honestly. That thing went to number one. First, it did. first song. Boom. Yes. Uh, so do you expect every other song to go to number one when your first one goes to number well, one? Well, yeah, I did. Yeah, I thought, oh, this is not as hard as everybody said. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, this this music business thing is so easy. Um, because oh. that, that song at the time, you know, I mean, it, it stayed number one for like three weeks. It was like, I don't know. I think it, I don't know who'd had a debut female artist. It was like there's all this history. And we had a we had a gold record pretty in three months. And I was like, this is yeah like like everybody said this was hard this is not hard then you realize then you realize okay when one of the biggest songs of your career is your first single now you're in danger of being a trivia question or the one hit wonder or like and that then the pressure starts um so i feel lucky that if i if i had to name less songs like that i would name walk away joe i would name how do i live there have been a few in my career that are those songs that have been spread out long enough that you know I get to keep doing this? I mean, that's that's the whole goal. Walk away, Joe. That boy's just a walk away, Joe. Born to be a lever, Come on, that's so good. Where do you go when you hear this one? That I listening to him sing with me in the studio. You know, I grew up on the Eagles, so to hear that voice singing with my voice is one of those things that you're like. I need to really pinch myself. I need to make sure I'm in this moment because this is, this is a real thing. This this is for this is history for me. This is something I can't imagine. And we felt like the song was out of everything I've ever recorded. When we finished cutting Walkway Joe before Don even was thought about to come in and sing to ask, all the musicians we all walked in the studio and nobody said that's a number one record. No, that that's how they'll say it in the movie. But the but how it really happened was that the musicians all said we something special just happened like we knew something magical happened we didn't know you just everybody felt like wow that was really cool what just happened we didn't know what it would what it would do one more she used to tie her hair up in ribbons and bows sign her it's like i'm listening to the soundtrack of myself growing up in mountain pine arkansas when i play these back like this is this is it this is on the radio all the time do you want to know the crazy story about this song? Do you, do you know the story about this song? Uh, tell me what, I don't know. I know lots of stories. Some of them aren't true, which right. we tried earlier. Right, right. <laughs> do not want to be an accountant. Never did. Still don't. Um, so there was a the TV pilot out for, uh, a movie out for, that was wanted to be a TV pilot long before Nashville. It was, it was just not ready. I guess, I guess this town wasn't ready for the, or America wasn't ready for the show. And it was called X's and O's. And it was back, it was in the early 90s. Um, and it like it was kind of filmed around Manuel's. Pam Tillis was in it. Do you remember this mm -hmm. at all? You were no. not, not here, but no. it was in the early. What 90s. network was going to run it? It was, I think it was like CBS, maybe. Oh, it wasn't like sure. TNN. It was like a. It was right. Like a, it was okay. going to be a. It was a pilot, and they did a movie, and this was the. It was called X's and O's, and the theme song for this movie was this song, and um, it was it was had it been been recorded, and uh, someone else was going to sing it, and, and it was Winona. Winona wouldn't mind me saying this, but she got sick. She got like. I think she had like a back issue or something happened where the track was cut and they were on the, they were like, we got to do this. And I got a call. Could you come in? The track's been cut. Can you sing this for this show? The track, you mean in the music for our listeners, like everything except the vocals. Was right, on. exactly. Yeah. So the key had been picked. Everything was cut. And so I said, well, let me see if it's in my key. And, and it was, we, we sing in close, close to the same key. And so I went in and recorded it for the movie. And I didn't have an album. I wasn't even working on a record. So I didn't have an album coming or anything. So I recorded it. And then, of course, the movie didn't really do anything. But we liked the song. So we asked if we could, you know, have it for an album. And then we made an album around that song. And if you listen closely as a musician, you'll totally get this. But there, it, and everybody who plays this song in my band, they're like, why is it so weird? Why are the changes so weird? It didn't have a solo and it didn't have a last chorus because it was a TV, it wasn't a song, it was a theme song, right? So we put this last, we put this chorus over the outro that was over different chords than the rest of the choruses. So it, it makes no sense to a musician to play it, but that's why it was, it's so oddly done because we kind of made it into a song when it really wasn't a song. So I, I owe gratitude to Winona for being sick. I'm so sorry that you were sick, but thank you. <laughs> It was a, <laughs> a, one of the biggest songs of my career. I yeah. appreciate it. A movie mm -hmm. that was maybe going to turn into a TV show, right. but that didn't make it. Correct. With a song with an artist that couldn't make it because she was sick. Right. That you happened to get the call and you were available. Yeah. And you went and cut it, and the next thing you know, we know every word to it. And then I made an album around it. And, and then, <laughs> isn't that crazy? Crazy. Wow, what a story. All right, Trisha Yearwood is here. Let me say this again. Let's be frank. Out today, 
This is the chance. Come fly with me. Let's fly. Did you listen to this a lot? Come Getting ready for it, or did you remove yourself from the Frank for a while? I had to try to remove myself a little. You yeah. know, you don't. You, you know, it's kind of like if you overthink things, then you can get in trouble. And I found for me in in making any kind of record, even like with songs that haven't been recorded before that are demos. If I learn it too well or listen to it too much, I'll start to try to copy something I heard, and it's just a natural thing with me. I'm kind of an imitator, so I have to listen, but then I have to sort of remo remove myself so that I don't get too stuck in something else. Because the coolest things that happen vocally are 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 those things that happen that you didn't think about. And then if you do some lick that's cool, and then you go back and go, oh, that was really cool. Let me do that ten more times and do it better. You don't. It's usually that first really spontaneous thing that works. Well, I have enjoyed our time together, Trisha. Me too. Thank you, Bobby. As always. Have we covered everything to your liking? We have. More than I could have dreamed. Yes. I'll see you at the next board meeting. Yes, right? If we don't <laughs> see you before that. Seat. That's right. I'm saving you a no, seat. No, really. We, I walked in. You know what? Can I ask you one more question? Yeah. I always wonder, because I had this up in case, in case we were feeling it, because we're feeling good, right? I would go to it. I'm feeling pretty good. You feeling I pretty feel good? good. Right, I feel good. I feel good. Like, I was wondering, when Garth starts to play this to you. No, I always thought I had <laughs> And about you, like the whole, it's you, right? What are you thinking? Well, you know, I do, in that moment, I'm thinking so many things. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to listen. I'm real, I'm being very aware. I've never heard this song it's before. It's at the CMAs. It's the CMAs. And I, and people probably song. think, oh, they just said she'd never heard it. I had never heard it. I was thinking it. that. Honestly, I was I, like, come on. <laughs> yeah. And I was, I was like, please let me hear it before you do this to me in front of, you know. He didn't let you hear it. Did not let me okay. hear it. So you're sitting there going, this is important, I know. I don't know what it is, but I know it's important. And then, you know, I only thing I said to him was, don't bring me up on stage. I don't know what your plan is, but do not bring me up there. <laughs> like, I'm not coming up there. But but so he's like, I won't do that. But then it's like, it's like you're sitting there and all of a sudden, here comes the spotlight. And I'm like, okay, this is awesome. There's a spotlight on me. And, and I'm not. I mean, I would never be a good crier in a movie or a soap opera because I'm an ugly crier. It's not, I don't do the really cute tear rolling down the cheek. I'm full on, like, there's snot. There's, like, it's not good. So I'm like, okay, just don't ugly cry. So I, when I see it back, I see my face. It's like I'm doing this whole, like, trying to just try and just keep it together. Um, and I'm trying to listen at the same time. And it was so, I, you know, <laughs> I just can't. I can't. I can't. So when we got home that night, I said, can you sing it to me now? Because I need to be able to sit and listen to it. And I need to be not having to think about what anybody else is thinking. And then I really did ugly cry. And I, and Jason Aldean was sitting down next to me and he leaned over and said, can you just tell your husband he's just making it really hard for the rest of us? Like he's like he's really making the guys look bad. Oh, oh that was makes good, it huh? even more special that they got home and she had to play it. it at home. I mean, it was it was oh. to be able to really listen to it in a in the right mode of, like you said, like listening with your eyes closed, like being able to really listen and not be having to think about right all the other stuff. I Did just, he play it himself or play it play it on track like play it? He through played it. it. He got his guitar out and played it. Yeah, and you know he got choked up. But he's so like, no, I didn't. I just, I was, I missed a chord and I was like, I was stalling because I was just, I'm like, you cried. You totally <laughs> cried. <laughs> oh, man. That's a good story, huh? Uh huh. I love it. Glad I felt like we were feeling I'm it. Me I'm glad too. too because I like the, I like knowing that. It's just an inside peek of what actually, because honestly, too, Bob, there was a lot of people we thought, how could she not have heard the song? Oh, I said that. I was like, I would want to hear it. If I were Trish, I would demand to hear it. I, yeah, I really did. Yeah. And actually, what really ticked me off is he played it for other people. He played it for my sister. And, I, and my sister, I'm like, tell me. She's like, no, but I cried so hard. I'm like, oh, my God, like, you've got to tell me what's <laughs> happening. Like, people, everybody else had heard it, but I had not heard it. And then she had him play it at home. I love it. Yeah. And, and I, I think it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Trisha, we will end this interview now, but I've had a wonderful time. Me too. Amy, you had a good time. Anything yeah. you'd like to end with? No. Like, All right. what, let's, can we play something? Sure. Let's play the, um, what's that? What's that fish song? Da, 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 da. What's that song? The ba baby dolphin? What's it? Baby, what's it called? Baby shark. Baby shark. You ever hear that one? <laughs> I recorded that actually. No, not really. Oh, wait. Her, her YouTube stand. Yes. Baby shark. Yes. Uh, Trisha, you're what? Anyway, clap me up. Trisha, you're what? Wrap it up today. Thank you. It's a Bobby Bones show.